Let's sing, sing a, a song. song for Mom. Okay. Okay. In situation one, you're shooting a simple sequence around the home. The sound will be adequate using the mic built into the camera. The camera mobility you need here is minimal, and you can stay close to your sound source. Situation two. God in this company to join this young couple in the bonds of holy matrimony. You want maximum camera flexibility, but under the circumstances, distinct sound from a single source is important. The ideal solution is to clip a wireless mic on your subject. Although the wireless is an omnidirectional mic, it's usually placed so close to the source of sound, little else is picked up. The wireless will get you good sound quality and let you shoot from any camera angle you desire. Rule of thumb. Number one, do not place microphones so that sound can bounce into it from a flat, reflective surface. Number two, use the same microphone type for an entire sequence, if possible. Number three, do not pan the microphone too fast. This creates noise. For simplicity's sake, let's look at how light from one source can make a world of difference in what we feel, simply by changing its position. Front lighting. It's flat, leaving uninteresting shadows to the side of the nose and face. Under lighting. We see unnatural shadows, leaving a sort of evil look, perhaps a touch of mystery. High side lighting. Aimed at 45 degrees to the subject, we see the classic look of portrait lighting, it comfortably models the face into a three-dimensional form. Top lighting. Shining directly down, deep shadows form under the eye sockets, nose, and chin. Again, a feeling of mystery and dominance. Side lighting. Splitting the subject in half, it highlights rugged masculine features or texture of fabric or skin. Side rear lighting. It yields an even more dramatic effect. With a slight shift further behind, we bring out the full shape of the subject in silhouette. Setting lights is nothing like it used to be. The camera eye today is sophisticated. It sees more with less light. And for your video setup, the classical three-point method for lighting is perfectly suited. Key light, the sun, the spotlight, the main light source falling on your subject. Placement, just to the left or right of your immediate camera position. Key light. According to the classic three-point system, your key is the first light to be set. It's positioned to one side of the camera and focused down at a 45-degree angle. This shortens the shadows that fall behind. The key light is the foundation for the rest of your lighting efforts. It illuminates the brightest area of your picture, and naturally, the eye of your viewer will head for it instinctively. Now the fill light. Fill light softer, more diffused light, filling in the shadows created by the key light, leaving just enough shadow for a feeling of depth. Placement. The fill light is placed on the same plane as the camera lens, on the opposite side from your key light. Fill light. Setting your fill light is easy. Its main job is to bring out detail in the shadows made by the key light. Let's see it again. Off, there is a heavy shadow. On, the shadow is softened. Too bright, and there's no shadow at all. That looks flat, uninteresting. Bring it down, and a pleasing mixture. Ideally, your fill light casts no shadows itself, only reduces the contrast of light and dark from the key. The final Hollywood touch in your lighting setup comes from the backlight. Backlight, a spotlight from behind pulls your subject out into the third dimension, defines it, placement, directly opposite your camera position, behind your subject, elevation, 45 degrees, backlight. The backlight is the third light to be set. 
it's also aimed out at 45 degrees. It complements the key light and fill light and brings me out from the background. See the rim effect around my shoulders and hair? Looks more lifelike. And that's the trick with lighting. You're working for an optical illusion for the camera's eye. The backlight is usually about as strong as the fill light and not quite as strong as the key light. But so much for theory. Cut them. In a world heavily dependent on artificial light, there is often enough of it to shoot by. So before you set your lights, use your artistic eye. Scan the scene. You may avoid fussing with any equipment at all. You may be able to get a more natural and authentic feel with a minimum of effort. Realistic interior lighting generally follows a principle called source lighting, which simply suggests that what you're shooting appears to be lit from a source of light that you can see. A window, for example, a lamp, a fireplace, and so on. Or when no particular source is present, the light conveniently falls from above and in the middle of your shooting area. Another effective technique when shooting in close quarters is bounce lighting. By pointing a light at a wall or ceiling, you can maintain a natural, even-looking lighting effect with a minimum amount of effort. But a word of caution, reflected light will pick up the color of the walls and ceiling. Two problems, limited space and lighting subjects in motion. Let's take a look at how to handle them. In most locations, setting your key and fill lights should be no problem. Keep them close to the camera. Additional backlight and set lighting takes a little ingenuity. Try hiding lights behind furniture. You'll get some exciting effects. Another trick, pump light from outside of the room through a door or window. Set your lights high to cut down on shadow throw and make sure to keep lights and stands out of your frame. The only way to light for subjects in motion is pre-planning. Know the move in advance. If need be, set up several places along the line of movement. Your camera should give you some latitude, but first and foremost, make it easy on yourself. Pick the angle that will give the most light to start with. The same goes for outdoor shooting. The challenges of lighting outside are much the same as indoors, except you have no ceiling, no places to hang lights. Using the sun as your key light, the three-point system can be employed using devices called reflectors, each taking a position similar to the lights in the studio. Reflectors are used to redirect sunlight into shadowed areas. This homemade job has aluminum foil on one side and a white card on the other. The soft reflector is used to fill the shade side of the face, giving off a diffused, softer glow. The hard reflector side casts a brilliant, penetrating beam, almost as bright as the sun itself. It's good for key light or backlight. No matter what type of reflector you use, it must be continually adjusted as the sun moves. When following motion outdoors, avoid shooting into a bright sky background or heavily backlit area as you follow the action, they will cause loss of detail and color.